Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, if you look at the light heavyweight division right now, just ask yourself, who are the guys getting pub there? We just had a high-profile fight there. It was Sergei Kovalev beating Bernard Hopkins. Another fighter getting a lot of pub, Adonis Stevenson, right? He recently won a Fighter of the Year award, I think, two years back. You have another big fight. Jean Pascal against Sergei Kovalev, right? Kovalev's fight right after beating Bernard Hopkins. Let's shake things up here a bit, though. You know, it's my belief that in life you come across what I call ringers. These are guys who are much better than advertised, right? Let me underline the word much, much better than advertised. These are the guys who I track because when this guy gets the big opportunity on the big stage, I think this guy is going to deliver, right? Or at a minimum, I know the odds will be such that I'll get a deal at the casino on the guy, right? Because to me, there's the media hype where people are blowing up fighters and, you know, the public has certain expectations. And then there's the hard reality, right? Isn't that the way life works? There's always the hard truth someplace. To me, one of the hard truths at light heavyweight is the WBA champion, Jurgen Bramer, right? This guy's one of my favorite fighters. I think this guy, like Johnny Gonzalez, another fighter to keep an eye on, I think this guy's underrated. He's had his problems, right? But this guy's underrated. He's very high level. And he's going to fight a high-level opponent in what figures to be a spectacular chess match. He's fighting Robert, excuse me, Robin Krasnicki. Right now, this is a great fight. I think Bramer wins the fight. That's my pick there. Why? Because I privately feel that Jurgen Bramer beats guys like Adonis Stevenson. Right? I privately feel that Bramer is a guy who would give Kovalev all he can handle. Bramer fights in Germany. I'm in the United States. Perhaps he's better known in Germany. I'm telling you that if I walk down the street here and if I stop five people and I said, hey, Jurgen Bramer, your thoughts, they would have a blank steer. I could do that at a boxing match. They wouldn't know who he is. You need to know who he is. He's an elite technician. He's a southpaw, right? He's very hard to hit with a jab, but yet there's an economy of movement. In other words, the guy's not wasting a lot of energy. He's not one of these guys who's in front of you bending and all this other stuff. No. This guy is subtle. He knows how to bend just enough. He knows how to position his guard in just the right place to stop your shots while he, operating, really, it looks almost right in front of you, is able to go to your body and go to your head. He's a master counterpuncher. If you research his amateur career, some of the scalps on his resume are huge. You'd be hard-pressed to find a guy with a better amateur career than this guy. Right? Let me also point out, too, that he's what I call adaptive-reactive. I get the feeling he spends the first round just looking at you, right? This is how adaptive, reactive guys are. It's almost like they're watching TV. He's just looking at you. Then in the second round, you notice he starts throwing uppercuts or whatever punch is open, right? One of the things I like with the guy is he can get his game on in second gear. In other words, I believe one of the hallmarks of brilliance is an ability to just cruise, right? Be able to cruise with your A game. 
without having to overexert yourself. He doesn't have to have a special night to counter you to death. He doesn't need to raise the temperature in the room to systematically take you apart. His fights follow an interesting pattern where you notice the first round he's reading, right? The second round he starts to land some shots. By the fifth round, you start to notice that the opponent is completely worked over, right? By the fifth round, the opponent suddenly looks shabby, suddenly looks like they've been hit with hard punches. That's when you start to realize that these short punches, they're short. These short punches that Southpaw Bramer throws have pop on them, right? There isn't a lot of wind-up. Now, the risk Bramer has, and it's a big risk, is he's more of a technician than an athlete. His game's so subtle that the judges really need to be paying attention to it. Right? You know, it's uh, kind of like Miguel Vasquez, same type thing, where you have to appreciate what the guy's doing, making the other guy miss, landing on counters, adjusting his punches, changing the cadence of the fight, the rhythm of the fight, so the other guy always seems to be off rhythm. The other guy always seems to be having an off night. The other guy always seems to have problems setting his feet. Right? You know, he fought Enzo Macarinelli. That's an interesting fight. What I want people to do is to look at the shape of Macarinelli's face. He's getting battered in that fight. But yet it doesn't look like he's getting battered. You know because of the injuries. Right? You know because Macarinelli isn't the best at rolling with punches. Right? But it's uh, interesting how Bramer never looks like he's overexerting himself in that fight. Right? It isn't an explosion with him. It's more like steady, systematic volume. Right? The Macarinelli fight, he closes one eye, he's in the process of closing the other eye when they pull the plug on the fight. Understand, Macarinelli made the mistake a lot of guys made. He thought that he could bum rush Bramer. What you find out is while Bramer looks like he's moving in slow motion, if you're an old-time fan of the NBA, think Chris Mullen. While he looks like he's moving in slow motion, he's actually changing gears. He actually has you walking into punches, right? Very high level guy, right? Let me also point out too, that you can't stay at the chessboard with him. If you're a mid-range hooker and you're trying to beat him at mid-range, good luck with that. His punches are too short. His timing is too good. <clears throat> he's going to hit you between hooks and he's going to cover up. Right? Let's talk about Krasnicki. Now, I'll concede out the gate that Krasnicki has a problem with volume, a jab, and movement. Right? He looked bad against Nathan Cleverly. Right? Styles make fights. I'm a skeptic of Cleverly, but Cleverly did dominate Krasnicki. I'll also agree, too, that Krasnicki isn't that good, in my opinion, on his back foot. Right? He does a lot better when he's standing still or when he's on his front foot than he does when he's on his back foot. I'll also say, too, that he's the guy who prefers a slower pace. In other words, I thought the Cleverly fight was just too fast for him. Now, all of that said, this guy's a great chess player. In so far as he hides his intention. In other words, there are moments in his fight where he's watching you throw punches. And he's just waiting while you're throwing punches. He has his feet set up. You think he's going to come back with the right hand, and then he comes in with the left hand. 
right? He's precise in terms of trying to confuse you, trying to come in with power shots, right? Let me say he wants to set up the lunging power shot. So it's interesting. While Cleverly is too fast for him, you'll notice that as Cleverly is throwing a combination and stuff, You'll notice that Krasnicki is the kind of guy who can look at you, just like Floyd Mayweather, right? These guys aren't bobbing and weaving and looking away and stuff. No, no, no. This is a different personality type. This is the guy who's looking at you. So you're throwing a combination. Krasnicki has a certain calmness to his game. So he's there. He's getting hit with some of the shots, but he's looking at you. Then when he sees an opening, let's say you're throwing a combination, you've just thrown this hand, and you're extended. He'll come over the top of it with a power shot, right? I'm expecting a very slow, very tactical matchup here. I think Krasnicki is going to necessarily force Bramer to try to get him on his back foot. I think the guys are going to literally be countering each other to death. I just think that Bramer has more to his game than Krasnicki. In other words, Bramer can fight going forward or going backward, right? I think Bramer will be on his front foot really because he understands Krasnicki is worse on his back foot than he is on his front foot. Right? Krasnicki is the better athlete. Bramer is the better technician. I don't think either guy is going to try to make this a shootout. I think they're both going to play it as a chess game. In other words, both guys are going to look for openings to counter the other. Both guys are going to try to mislead the other fighter. Understand, even though Bramer is out of a southpaw stance, he has a great right hand up front. Right, Great right hook. Understand, too, Bramer is going to try to find Krasnicki's body. Krasnicki is not that gifted defensively. <clears throat> so I like Bramer in this fight. More importantly, I want people to view Bramer as someone who should be included in the conversation at light heavyweight. Understand, Bernard Hopkins jumped at the opportunity to fight Sergei Kovalev. I don't think he'd jump at the opportunity to fight Bramer, right? Because I think elite fighters understand the guys out there who are too complicated. Let's talk about John Pascal. Pascal's a better athlete than Bramer. Pascal hits harder than Bramer, right? Pascal moves better in the ring when he wants to move than Bramer does, right? I think Pascal would have a hard time with Bramer. Because Bramer's punches are so short and Bramer's defense so good that I think Pascal would find himself in the ring really with a machine. Right? You know, old Pascal, not new Pascal, who's a bit more in the pocket, but old Pascal, pre Hopkins Pascal, who was more of an ambush fighter. That would be interesting to see how that fight would unfold because I get the feeling that if you don't stand at the chessboard with Bramer, you have a chance, <clears throat> right? If you can lunge in and catch him without showing him a punch pattern, I think you'd have a chance there. Curiously enough, while Pascal, in my opinion now, is a better in-the-pocket fighter, certainly his fight against Boutte, he's in the pocket and looking better, that would actually hurt him against Bramer. Right? Understand, boxing's rock, paper, scissors. Because the more you sit at the chess table, the more at risk you are against a grandmaster. Right? In other words, to beat Bramer, you would have to do a full court game. You can't beat him in the half court. Pay close attention to this. Just understand, Bramer's been a light heavyweight champion for some time. Understand, he's a decorated amateur. Right? Canada and Germany need to get together if we're going to get a full conclusion on the light heavyweight division. 
Just know that if they announced Bramer against, let's say, Adonis Stevenson, I'd be rolling with Bramer. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.